Story by Scott Fisher. W is for werewolf. Golly, am I glad to see you. Well, Jim Howard, welcome to Cape Howe. You're just the medicine the doctor ordered. <laughs> and you're the doctor. How are you, Bill? Never better. Say, am I glad to shake hands with you again. You're the same old Jim. Five years haven't changed you a single bit. Well, I'm sorry. I can't say the same thing about you. You look tired, almost sick. I say you aren't ill, are you? Ill? Oh, no. No, I've just been working hard. Not much sleep lately. Come on, I've got a wagon waiting right over here. Wagon? Sure, nothing fancy about us. We'll take the wagon to the boat landing, and then we'll row over to my island. Uh, uh, say, now, wait a minute, Bill. Are you trying to rib me? What, what do you mean, your island? Oh, didn't I tell you? I, I haven't lived in Cape Howe for three years. I, well, I, I find it more pleasant and comfortable out on the island. But what island? Folks around here have another name for it. But don't mind them if you hear it. I call it a chape. Hmm. Uh, uh, say that again, Bill. A chape. Uh, well, what's that, Scandinavian or Esperanto? French. Come on, here's the wagon over here. Young John's waiting on the boat landing. Oh, I say, how is young John? Jim, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm worried about him. He's having trouble with his studies. Doesn't seem to like books and hates company. Well, I, I'd say he's more lonesome than anything else. It's more than lonesomeness, Bill. Ever since Bill Jr. died, he, he hasn't been the same. Angela and I were sorry to hear about Bill Jr. Pretty sudden, wasn't it? Yes, pretty sudden. That's the way it is in this country, though. So much fever, so few conveniences. Oh, by the way, you say Angela and the child will be along in a few days? Oh, yes, you got my wire? Got it yesterday. I didn't know your sister lived at Lowston. Oh, yes, she has for years. Angela wants to visit about a week, and then she'll come on down here to Cape Howe by steamer. Well, incidentally, old man, do you think this country's all right for the baby? Had those shots, has she? Oh, yeah. Yes, I did everything you suggested in your letter. You know, that letter you wrote almost scared Angela out of coming. <laughs> she said if it's that dangerous here, she doesn't think we should risk the child's life by bringing her here. Well, there's no danger at all if the child's been inoculated against the three diseases I mentioned. Well, I took care of that all right. You're sure there's... No other danger. I've taken care of any other danger there might be. Hmm? What do you mean? Just that. There's nothing in the world for your Angela to worry about. Please believe me, Jim. All right, old man, all right. Huh. Angela and I are on the first vacation we've had since we've been married. And believe you me, we're here to make the best of it. <laughs> Good, that's fine. Come on, the, the wagon's waiting, see? Right over there. Fine country, eh, what, Jim? Oh, marvelous. We've enjoyed the whole trip so far. Didn't even get seasick on the way across. Not even the baby. And she only a year old. And say, I'm anxious to see that girl. How come you named her Sandra? Oh, that's one of Angela's favorite names. Pretty name, I like it. Mm. Oh, this is the blamedest means of transportation oh. I've ever had to endure. I thought you would at least have your own limousine. No, Jim... I haven't been doing so well lately. I hope you'll be able to put up with what I have to offer you on the island. Rough and rugged, is it? Quite. I built the cabin myself. It's not much, but it's comfortable. Oh, by the way, did you bring the books I wrote you about? Books? Oh, yes, they're in the trunk. Oh, good. I must say, that's the strangest collection of books I've ever heard of. Uh, what kind of experimenting are you doing on that island anyway? It's pretty serious, Jim, I assure you. Well, it must be. I read your books on the way across. You you did? Yes, indeed. Dr. Helgen Woodward's book on lycanthropy and Henry Joseph McClure's pamphlet on the disease lumpus vulgaris and Guy Ender's story, Werewolf of Paris, and 
two other books on werewolves. Can't for the life of me imagine, Andrews, what you want with books like that out here in this wilderness. All right, Jim, here we are. Oh, John, here's Jim Howard. You remember Mr. Howard, don't you, Johnny? Well, sure he does. How are you, John, old boy? All right. Glad to see you, sir. Say, hey, where's that old smile I used to see? Here, let me shake your hand. No, sir. I don't want to shake hands. Oh, come on now. We're old friends, aren't we? No, Mr. Howard. Oh, I say, now. Jim, just a minute. Let go, Mr. Howard. There. Jim. Oh, there now. Shake just like old friends. Let go. Let go my hands. Let go. Oh. Jim, please. I say. The boy's handbill. Come on, Jim. Into the boat with you. Come along, Johnny. Johnny, get into the boat, son. Yes, sir. Come along, Jim. All right, I'm... I'm shoving off. All right, Johnny. You want to take the oars for the exercise, or you want me to row? Well, son? I told him not to shake my hand. I told him, didn't I? Johnny. Can I help it? Is it my fault if my hand's off? Johnny! You want to row or not? Yes, sir. I'll row. Okay, son. Hop to it. Johnny. Uh, Sonny. If I did something... Come on. Down to the other end of the boat, will you? Here. Sit here. I see, Andrews. That boy's hand. Quiet. He's, he's upset enough. But, Bill, the palm of Johnny's hand... Good Lord, man. It's all covered with a thick growth of hair. Okay, Jim. This is your room. Hmm. Say, this is fine. You say you built this yourself, Bill? Yep. Every bit of it. How do you like my island? Oh, I think it's perfect, but uh, pretty inconvenient. Oh, I don't mind. Sorry we had to arrive here so late. I'll show you around in the morning. Yes, I'm anxious to see the rest of your place, Bill. I want to talk to you more about your work. Yes, of course. Tomorrow. It's pretty late now. Yes, it is late. <laughs> so I'm, I'm afraid I rather bored you, old man, with my chatter at the dinner table. Oh, Jim, you hear them. <laughs> You've never bored me a minute in all the time I've known you. <laughs> oh, that man Raphael of yours is certainly an excellent cook. Yes. He's an excellent tutor for young Johnny, too. You'll find him quite helpful if you want anything. Fine. Oh, by the way, the people in this spot are a superstitious lot, Jim. Don't let them bother you with any of their nonsense. Nonsense? Yes. Yeah, a silly rot about, well, uh, things in the night. What thing? Oh, there's nothing, of course. But they take all sorts of means to ward off, well, the evil spirits. Oh, oh, oh I see. Here, I'll, I'll set this charm here on your desk. You won't be using the desk. Charm? And... Uh, what charm? Oh, it's just a simple thing that the people hereabouts always insist on putting in the room in which a person sleeps. Here, these three bits of green twigs. Two of them standing upright like this. There we have it. Hey, what is this? One cross piece on the uprights like this. Then a lakeshore pebble. This little bit of charred wood. There you are. <laughs> now you're, you're fully protected. Protected <laughs> against what? Why, those evil spirits I was telling you about. And now just forget about them, Jim. I just put the charm here in case Raphael comes in. He's very superstitious, and he'll never rest until he's made a charm for you himself. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, but I still... Now, just forget all about it. Just a whim of Raphael's. Good night, Jim. Night, old man. See you in the morning. Right. Right and early. If you need a spare blanket, there's one in the closet there. Right, Bill. Good night. Pleasant dreams. Hmm. A whim of Raphael's, huh? Three bits of green twig, a lakeshore pebble, and a piece of charred wood. 
Hmm. That's a strange combination. To ward off evil spirits, so Bill claims. But what evil spirits? Great horn toads, what's that? What in the world is that? Bill! Bill, I say, Bill, what's that howling? It is nothing, Mr. Al. Huh? Oh, you, Raphael. Nothing but a wild animal howling in the night. But that sounded like a wolf. <clears throat> wolf, Mr. Al. Yes. It couldn't have been a wolf. There are no such animals in this country, you know. I know that, but... There, you hear it? It, it, it will be all right, sir. Did Mr. Andrews give you the charm? Charm? Oh, yes, the charm. It will protect you, sir, from anything. Wait a minute, Raphael, don't go. Just what is this? Thing I'm being protected from. Oh, nothing. Nothing, sir. Nothing at all. People around these parts are curious lot. That's all. Superstitious, you know. And all that sort of thing. So we humor them by always keeping charm in the sleeping rooms of our homes. Yes, but I don't see why you should worry about humoring anybody. Way out here, alone like this, on this well, island. Well, sir, it is just the habit of Mr. Andrews Arako. But he said it was you he was satisfying by placing the charm in my bedroom. Yes, sir. That is, well, what, what I mean, sir, I'll best be going. Young John isn't feeling so well tonight. I hope you sleep good, Mr. Owl. And don't worry about the owling. Nothing will harm you. Hmm. Don't worry about the howling. That's strange. That howl's coming from the east wing of this cabin. Right over there. By George, I'm going to skirt this place and have a look. Yeah, quiet now. Sound. What? A light just went on in that room the sound's coming from. That window's heavily barred. And the window glass is frosted and curtained so no one can see inside. The howl is coming from inside that room. There's the door to the place. Oh, Bill. Bill, are you in there? Bill. Some animal in there, all right. Bill. Andrews, are you in there? Whatever it is, it's trying to get out. Bill! Bill, are you all right? Are you in there, old man? Bill, are you in there? Bill! Yes, Jim? What is it? I... I just wondered if you were all right. I heard that animal howling, and I thought that... Animal? What animal, Jim? Don't tell me you didn't hear it. <laughs> You weren't by any chance dreaming already, were you, old boy? But the howling came from inside that room. Say, you have been hearing things. I certainly have. <laughs> and just before you opened the door, I heard an animal sniffing and whining and scratching at the door. Oh, now, Jim. A joke's a joke. But I'm not joking. Well, come on inside and look for yourself, then. Does anybody use this room? Certainly, it's young Johnny's. He and Bill Jr. had the room together before... before we lost Bill Jr. Bill? I'd swear there was an animal in here a moment ago. <laughs> Normally, Jim, I'd be a little confused by what you're saying. Well, the long trip, the worry about your baby daughter... Look, look, there on the door. Long, deep scratches, like an animal's nails would make. Oh, oh those. Jim, those marks are ancient. The boys used to own a collie dog. We don't have him anymore. We used to shut him up in here sometimes, and he'd scratch on the door for someone to let him out. Now what's this? Bill, what is this? A long, heavy chain, securely fastened to the metal bedpost, and a huge leather collar on the other end. Yes, that was the collar's chain and collar. We, well, we've never removed it from the bed. We'd chain the dog here at night to protect the boys. But look here. Fresh blood stains on the collar, and 
little wisps of grayish fur. Jim, forget it. Those stains aren't fresh. That dog hair has probably been there for ages. Yeah. I suppose so. But why the bars on the windows, Andrew? Just a protection for the children. Well, come on in the living room, old man, and let me get you a drink. Call it a night, shall we? Yes. So I suppose we'd better. Maybe a little sleep will do everybody a lot of good. Angela, I can't tell you how happy I am to have you and Jim here to visit me. Oh, we've looked forward to this for six months, Bill. I envy Jim for having a week's head start on me. <laughs> oh, we really like it here, Bill. Uh, baby asleep, dear? Yes. And it's time we had some rest, too. And that's my hint to clear out. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I'm going over to the mainland. I'll be back by morning. Anything wrong, Bill? Oh, no, not a thing. Jim, may I ask a favor? Certainly. That watch charm you're wearing. Solid silver, isn't it? Why, well, yes, it is. Do you think you could give it to me? Give it to you? <laughs> Why, of course. I have a very special reason for wanting it. I wouldn't ask for it if I didn't have. Here you are. Thanks, old man. I... I hope I can return it to you. Well, good night. See you tomorrow. Good night, Jill. Jim, why does Bill act so strangely? I... I don't know, dear. Hmm. I wonder why he wanted that silver watch charm. Odd. Oh, oh by the way, you said you had that wire for me. Oh, yes. It's here in my purse. I'll get it for you. Would you cover Sandra, dear? She's kicked her blanket off. Oh, sure. Here you are, darling. Thanks. Hmm. Say, Angela. Yes, dear? Listen. In answer to your cable... I have been able to learn that the grandfather of William J. Andrews was shot in France almost half a century ago by an angered mob. His grave was recently opened, and instead of the remains of a man, investigators found the almost perfectly intact body of a strange beast, somewhat resembling a wolf. Jim! No. Just about that. Oh. oh, Jim, what's that? Something's wrong. Come on, hurry. Oh, look. Look down the doorway of that room with the bars at the windows. Some animal running out there near the edge. Jim. I hit that creature three times. I couldn't have missed him. And yet the bullets didn't even slow him down. Oh, Jim. There's the doorway. It's Rafael. Look at him. Oh, his throat. <laughs> Only an animal could have done a thing like that. Where's well, young Johnny? Look, Jim. That heavy chain hanging from the bedpost. The collar's gone. Chain snapped right in two. Angela, you and I have a job to do. I... I hate to ask you to do this, but... I think you've got the courage. To do what, dear? Come along with me. You will see. You about ready to get the lid off the box now? Oh. Steady, Angela. Steady. Oh, this thing's terrible. Desecrating Bill Jr.'s grave like this. Digging up the casket. If I'm wrong about this, well, we see. Hand me that bar. That's it. Now, I hold the light over here now, Angela. Just another nail or two. 
Gee, I must. Just exactly what I thought. That's not a boy's body in that casket. It, it's what was Bill Jr. But look. Woolly fur all over it. And that head and face. Like a dog's. Like a wolf's. Oh, Jim. Young Bill Jr. died a werewolf. His great-grandfather before him had the same disease. That's why Bill Jr. died so mysteriously. That's why Andrews had to leave the mainland to move out here. And all the while, he's been studying, trying to effect a cure. The hair on the palms of young Johnny's hands. Not wanting me to shake hands with him. Now I see why Bill was so insistent about the charm of twigs, stone, charcoal. My watch charm. A silver bullet. Jim. That howl again. Jim. Come on, hurry. Hurry. Look, there's no light in the room. We left it on, didn't we? Oh, yes, we did. Oh, Jim, hurry. There. The light went on. Look out, dear. Let me in there. Oh, locked. This door's locked. Who's in there? Open this door. Open up. Oh, Jim. Jim. Open up this door. Open up, I say. Everything's finished now. Young Johnny is dead. Friday the 13th. And you have heard Scott Bishop's 13th original tale of dark fantasy. W is for werewolf. Ben Morris was heard tonight as Jim Howard. Garland Moss was Bill Andrews. Eleanor Naylor Corrin took the part of Angela Howard. Fred Wayne was Raphael. And Don Stoltz played young Johnny. Next Friday night at the same time, listen to the 14th in this series of dark fantasy dramas. An intriguing, exciting story called A Delicate Case of Murder, written by Scott Bishop. A strange, weird tale of a spiritualistic medium who suddenly finds herself in the midst of a vicious and well-planned murder plot with herself the victim. Murder and fantasy combined to produce one of the most eerie adventures you have ever heard in A Delicate Case of Murder. Tom Paxton speaking. Dark Fantasy comes to you each Friday night from WKY, Oklahoma City.